Hi, welcome to the Medium Channel and welcome to the April 2024 psychic forecast. And believe it or not, the eclipse isn't the only thing happening in April. But do you guys remember the movie The Day the Earth Stood Still? Of course, the 1951 version is the best. I'm going to explain why the energies of April, why that movie is so relevant for the activities going on in this month. So, um, so in this forecast, I'll explain that... Um, a little bit about the astrology and numerology, dive into a lot of psychic predictions. Um, I've got nine or 10 pages of notes here. So we're going to rip through this stuff today. There's really a lot to talk about. I mean, this is the big shift in, into new earth and into the Aquarian aid. We've been preparing for a while. I also have a few recommended practices that Spirit gave me, um, as well as some divination cards for anything that I missed in the end. So I'm going to start in a moment. I just like to give the live people a minute to get their notification. So if you're here as a video, just hang out for another minute. We're going to really dive into this. And um, like I said, there's a lot of information. I'm not going to interact with the chat so much um, just because I've got a lot to talk about. And I don't want, you know, I respect your time. I don't want to keep you on here for hours and hours. I think if I can get this all done in, in, in about 40 minutes, that would be great. Maybe even sooner. And uh, that's basically it. So who's here? Hey, Michael Marr and Laura B. And uh, people are finding us. And Mr. Floyd, good evening. Laura, Donna, Millie, Janae, welcome. And Yvonne and Kim and Children's School of Yoga. Hi, Doreen and Meryl and Lisa. That's it so far. The people are, are, are finding us. So we're in the days in between. Yeah, that's a, uh, I, I use that, that title, the day, the days between is actually the title of a Grateful Dead song that I believe that Jerry Garcia kind of, it was very prophetic. You know, he wrote that late, later on in his career. So I use that to describe where we are now. We're in the days in between the two eclipses, very different energies. So, of course, the big eclipse is on April the 8th. But like I said, there's other things that are going on with that. And uh, and just so, you know, while people are still finding us and, and getting their notifications, for those that don't know, the, the day the Earth stood still was a really brilliant, very ahead of its time sci-fi movie about good, good aliens that, that land on Earth, but some... Um, upstart officer like shot one of them or shot one of the weapons so basically to make a long story short they need you know the people of earth needed to know how vulnerable they are so they shut all the power off for a half hour i mean that was there's other things going on in the movie it's a great great movie they shut all except for emergency stuff they left the hospital stuff on they shut everything down for a half hour and people freak right the heck out. And they just said at the end of the movie, you know, your destiny is in your own hands, but you know, know that there's higher forces. There's benevolent forces that are trying to help you and you got to change your ways. So anyways, so I think it's time to dive in. Um, and Mr. Floyd, I, I'll, I'll just post this it because. Mr. Floyd does, does some really high level uh, channeling with with Archangel Raphael and, and Saint Germain, so you can check his channel also. We, of course, we do channeling here as well, and, and most of this is based on channeled information. So, are we ready to dive in? I'm going to be looking at these notes a lot, so warning, <laughs> warning. My my head's going to be down a lot. But firstly, the numerology. It's a universal twelve month now. Number 12 in Chaldean numerology is the pause or the sacrifice, I think, officially. But it's also the hangman in the tarot. So it's a pause. Again, the day the earth stood still. So even though it's a very highly charged, very energetic, active energy, it's airy season, there's eclipses. There's also a cosmic pause that's happening. So we need to be still, to be in the heart. Um, so this, this enhances chances for things like like stoppages in society, like outages, um, things like that that could affect like the communication. Like it wouldn't take that much of a solar flare to compress the ionosphere to a degree that we lose lose satellite communication. That's our cell phones. That's our internet. Just to clue you in, so nothing is permanent here. Every, everything is very, is very vulnerable, but 
Why hasn't this happened already? Well, we have helpers. You know, we have higher frequencies. This is just the physical plane. We're multidimensional. We live in a higher frequency. So we're very protected also. And I, I want you guys to know that because this isn't about doom and gloom. Yeah, I'm going to bring up a, a few pretty hard things, but it's not about doom and gloom. It's about choices. It's about the energy. It's about the awakening. So, um, so to understand that. And uh, so, so number 12 enhances. Okay. I'm, I'm just read, obviously enhances chance for soft outages, a waiting of sorts for the world to reset. So the, the, these eclipses are highly energetic. And then, the world has to reset because we come go into one vibration into another. Everything has to reset into this higher vibration, including us, by the way. Although we've had a lot of practice runs, it's been going up incrementally. But uh, but that does not mean it will be an eventful month. Lots of Pisces energy in this Aries season. I think four planets are still going to be in in Pisces in April, three or four. Um, so this activates the you know the the. Uh, Aries energy activates the action principle, that's Mars, but all the Pisces energy activates the subconscious or the intuition or the connection to spirit. And there's also a dash of, of Aquarian energy, Pluto one degrees Aquarius. So that's the evolutionary revolutionary piece. Now we get started right away, April 1st, Mercury station, and it goes retrograde. Mercury retrogrades are, are, are a slow down again slow down the day the earth stood still so slow down it's at the liberating degree of 27 degrees in the sign of aries from chaldean numerology 27 is the great liberator so the um, mercury is about communications um and the, the the point of the actual station is very powerful so um that's a good thing. <laughs> that, that's a good thing. So a lot of this energy is helping us to be free, basically. Um, so look, so I'll, I'll read what I wrote in my notes too. A lot of this is channeled. So I, it's like, I, I can barely read it. So I'll, I'll do my best, but look for surfacing of suppressed information. Yeah, we, there's been a lot of suppressed information about time it starts to surface, right? I mean, slowly it's been happening. So a trickle may turn into a tidal wave, maybe not in April, but leading in, into the spring and the summer month. Personal shadows exposed also. So this is still a time to, to finish up that shadow integration work. So shadows in the society that are veiled and our own subconscious shadows are going to be more exposed in the light. And of course, the eclipses are about shadows and light, right? Um, so personal shadows as well, shadows of society exposes, enhances the energy of the paw. So it is an energetic paw, even though it's very, very active. It may sound contradictory, but it is what it is. So who stopped in? Hi, Barbara Lightworker. Welcome, welcome. And Peggy, welcome. Laura, Donna, and anybody else that I missed that just jumped in. Thank you. So the big event. Of course, that's April the 8th, the solar eclipse at the solar degree point, 19 degrees Aries. In fact, in Chaldean numerology, it's the sun in the tarot, in the major arcana, it's the sun also. The sun, you know, what does light do? It exposes shadows, right? So um, very, and, and what are eclipses? They're a shadowing effect. It's a super new moon. I'll talk about that shortly. But that's why we're, we're getting a total rather than an annular eclipse because the moon from our perspective is actually bigger than the sun. In fact, it's a lot bigger. It's about 220 miles, no, 110 miles bigger. So the path of totality is a full 110 miles of this eclipse. And it, and, and at its peak, it, it's it's four minutes in Texas and about three minutes when it goes in, in into uh, into um. Canada. I'm not sure why it changes. Maybe, maybe the moon's getting smaller. I don't know. But anyway, um, so what a lot of the qualities of, of, of the solar eclipse, especially this one, is enlightenment. It's spiritual awakening. We're hearing a lot of this doom and gloom on social media. It's like it's biblical. It's like, you know, these cities are named after like Sodom and Gomorrah and all hell's going to break loose. And I feel like 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 my guides are, are, are swearing at me because I'm hearing bull bleep in my mind. I feel like they're saying, no, this is a spiritual ascension. But, you know, as, as the vibration changes, there's a cascading effect and there are challenges. So it's not necessarily easy. So rebirth and initiation on many levels. An initiation is a death and a rebirth. So when we have, when we grow spiritually, it's not like we're sloping to higher and higher levels. We we quantum leap into a level. 
we plateau for a while. And then when we have the next awakening or the next initiation, we quantum leap into the next level, just like electrons do when they reach a higher energy, like a higher valence, they, they jump into a new quantum, um, whatever it's called, quantum level <laughs> or whatever. So anyways, um, what happened inside the atom happens in the universe also it's just scaled down and and it's it's a different timeline it's a different scale but it's the exact same process which is why quantum physics is going to prove and it's starting to already what the ancient mystics like jesus like buddha like like the uh ancient yogis have been telling us all along isn't that beautiful so science i don't think i wrote a lot about science in my notes but that but as i'm talking about it spirit saying this is going to spike a lot of advances in science also, which you know is a good thing depending on how it's used, right? Of course. So use this energy to release the old cosmic portal opens to clear karma. You know, we're, we're clearing thousands of years of karma. The earth's clearing thousands of years of earth karma, suppressed um, energy, um, cultural, um, what's the right word? Um, I can't think of my words today. That means I need more water. I'll just say cultural shadows because I can't think of the word right now. Um, you know, su trauma, like like suppressed trauma. The earth absorbed a lot of that. And as it's released, a lot of things happen on the earth. It's challenging a lot of changes to the earth herself, to the consciousness of humanity, you know, the 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 struggles that are going on with the conflicts with countries, all, all that stuff. So anyway, use this energy to release the old cosmic portal opens to clear karma. Super moon plus exact eclipse so it's exact the lunar eclipse was was a um what was it called a, a, a penumbral eclipse it wasn't exact you know we were in, in kind of the um the the outline of the shadow not in the direct shadow but you know the sun and the moon are exact now you know the moon it's gravitational also. It affects consciousness, but it affects the tides too. So it's like people that, that are saying, you know, the moon has no effects, that this is all nonsense or whatever. It's like, but look what the moon does to the oceans, to the water. And when the sun and the moon are either in alignment or opposite, those tides are larger. You know, we have the spring tides. So this is what's happening. But imagine now that, that this gravitational pull of the super moon, because it's closer, the gravitation pull is stronger, and the sun in the exact same position in the, in the sky. That's like taking a magnifying glass and putting all this energy into one area. That's going to put some stress on the planet. That's going to have an effect on the geology. But it's also because it's more a, an effect of energy and consciousness, that's going to have a huge effect on collective consciousness. And by the way, if you miss this, this eclipse in the United States, um, no worries, because 20 years, from, I think it's 2044, we get the next total solar eclipse in the U.S. So you don't have to wait that long to see the next one. But you can travel to another country if you can't wait. So anyways, um, so again, eclipse, highly focused gravitational event affects everything on Earth. Also, the green devil common, that don't take devil as anything negative. It's just called that because of the shape of it. It becomes visible again. The comets are cosmic and messengers. Green is about healing, right? So this is, this is, there's a very healing vibe that's coming in you know, with this uh, green comet. It may even be visible. Oh my God, my getting foot cramps, excuse me. I must have been Japanese in another lifetime because I always sit on a low table. I'm on the floor. My feet are ramping up and
Okay, we should be on now. Sound should be back. Sorry about that. Um, all right. Okay, so moving right along. Um, so somebody, uh, you know, post that you're actually hearing me now, please. All right. Um, eee, good. Okay, thank you. All right, sorry about that. I just kicked the wire and my microphone went out. Like, all right. They talk about the green devil comment. The green is healing, but also a stern warning about Mother Earth. Lots of planetary upheaval. It's, you know, a warning means it doesn't mean like it's the end of the world or, or, the, or anything like that. It means we need to change our ways as, you know, it's humanity basically. So there's, so besides that, there's also planetary alignments that are happening around the eclipse. So around the fourth, Venus and Neptune are going to conjunct at 28 degrees Pisces. So that's very interesting. Venus and Neptune are octaving planets. Like Neptune is a higher vibration of, of Venus in a way. So it's very compatible. Venus is love. It's success. It's all that stuff. Neptune is higher mind. But Neptune's also illusions and delusions. So this can help expose a lot of these delusions in this house of cards society, the sixth society that we live in. We'll get to that shortly. But anyway, so right after the eclipse, Jupiter and Uranus conjunct. So Venus and Neptune is very emotional. Jupiter and Uranus is very kind of higher mind, very spiritual. So we have these. Um, and also the, the eclipse is happening. Oh, no, it's right after the eclipse at 21 degrees Taurus. And 21 is the world in the tarot and, and the major arcana and, and in Chaldean numerology. So it's really bringing a lot of enlightenment to the world. And it can be evolutionary and revolutionary. So everything in the cosmos is pointing to change. And this this is eclipse is a catalyst. Eclipse seasons last for about six months. And then you have another eclipse season, basically. So we're always in some eclipse influences. But I think... April will be interesting, but I think you know, May through July, you know, May and June, August is a huge, huge month also. And I'll you know, get to that when I get closer to August. Um, so also there could be a nova or a supernova that I saw in some astro astronomy site. Very high solar activity continues. Um, a transformative year of the dragon. So we're in that. And then Pluto is at one degree to Aquarius. So Pluto's right at that, you know, one degree is the sun. It's like the I am principle, basically, or the, the first inkling of, of manifestations that Aquarian energy is higher mind, it's evolution, revolution, um, all that good stuff. So anyways, before we'll go in, into the prediction. Predictions are always choice center. You know, I do I'll call it a psychic forecast. It's more an energy update than anything. The thing is that um, timelines are fluid. Not everything's going to pan out. I'm going to miss a few things. Um, what it? I think it was Janae, but somebody was pointing out that, that I think it was in September, I predicted somebody in the royal family getting, getting cancer. And that happened to the princess of Wales. Maybe to the king also. That all happens. I don't even remember that. And I rarely talk about the royal family. It's just not my thing. But it was interesting that that came up. Um, I think there's, the, you know, it, it's all part of the show or part of the game, basically. So anyway, so as they say. So that was a good hit. But the point being is that I'm not not everything going to pan out exactly how I say it. Take this as a forecast. You know, everything's fluid. The main thing I want to kind of get the flavor of the energy and, and what we need to understand, what to expect so we can make the best choices for our growth, you know, to stay safe, but also to stay empowered and thrive dur during this huge change, basically. So anyhow, um, so let's talk about brief inter internet, cell, satellite, communication, blackouts possible. Big month of fires and floods. March was a big month of fires and floods. Okay, so that continues. Possible breakthroughs on child trafficking or human trafficking. It's not just children. Um, it, it could even lead to some partial disclosure by the end of the month of the May. So I think that's going to be hot and heavy on the news. So that's thing. The show massive solar flare activity. I'm feeling like like we may right around the the first week of May we may have a big one, but that doesn't exclude April. It's saying I think tax season just popped up in my mind, so we may have a big one around the 14th, 15th, 16th of April. Also, we're at the peak of the 11-year solar cycle, and then the sun is 
in some other awakening process just like we are so that's enhanced this time around basically so the bridge clap and what was it in baltimore is a heads up for supply shortages coming maybe not in april but to keep an eye on that um there's significant evidence i'll, ne I'll never say anything or 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 put anything as fact that I don't know is fact, but let's just say there's circumstantial evidence. And if you look at the history of how the powers operate on this world, that that was a, not an accidental event, that it wasn't just, there was a blackout on the ship and then they couldn't, they couldn't control everything and they slammed on, uh, into the bridge. I mean, it could have been that because I wasn't there, I don't know, but whatever the case, there's also been fires in Virginia. So Washington, D.C. is really getting hit with a lot of energy right now. I think some of it's extraterrestrial or interdimensional or, or from God, him and herself. Um, could it, it's all leading to reforms, but but I think there, there's a lot going on. We're still, even though the USA Pluto return is officially over, the next several years, it's really going to tell the story. So the, like the, a lot of the ramifications of that and, and how it's going to change the structure here in the country of governments, of the programs, of the economy and all that stuff is still coming. So energy focus. OK, that was my next point. Now, Washington, D.C., government take, could take a huge hit, bridge class, Virginia Park. Oh, possible cardiac event for the president or vascular event or, or a high-ranking official. It could be um, the, you know, the ex-president also. I still don't have a set prediction on, on who's going to win. I think one of them is going to either bow out or be forced to bow out. I'm not sure which one. But just to give you an idea of this, basically, um, the sick society that we live in that people are just so programmed they buy into, we've got a president who's basically... Um, I don't know if he's in, indicted or just allegated for, for crimes. We have, whether you love Donald Trump or hate him, doesn't matter. You know, for the sake of this argument, just, you know, for, forget about all, all that stuff. I try to stay kind of neutral about these things anyway. But we have somebody running for president that's being, you know, again, accused. So it's alleged, you know, he's not convicted of anything at this point, to my knowledge, or maybe one or two things but alleged of so many criminal activities, including high treason, you know, based on, on January 6th, based on documents leaving the White House. And he's running for president. It's like, you know, let that sink in for a second. Again, you know, whether you love, love him or hate him, that's sinking. That's the society that we live in. You know, it's like a game of emperor's clothes. It's like somebody can appoint to that emperor sooner or later. Say, hey, look, the emperor's got no clothes. Like, oh, oh, oh my God, yeah. So, um, so just needed to bring that up because you know these are things. You know, as people awaken, you know, the more people that question these things, the better. Basically, it's like like you know we can't find a candidate that, that that's clean, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, we can't have an election that's actually not not. Um, tampered with i don't think in my adult lifetime we, we have had one honestly to, but that's my own opinion so all right so where was i let me go to washington dc surges in spiritual consciousness yes i like that part natural portal activation well certainly the eclipses are that energy split greater dysfunction on the 3d versus the five greater Dysfunction on the 3D versus the 5D. I don't know what that meant, but I wrote it. Society splitting into et cetera. So there are theories that we wouldn't even know this if it happened, that 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 the, the, that we're going to split, like, like society or the earth is going to split into two. One part of that is going to be still in, in the 3D or, or, or you know, kind of carrying on as we were where, where the others ascend. I mean, that may be true. And like I said, I wouldn't know it. Um, maybe timeline splits happen. I mean, there's multiple realities. It's multiple dimensions that are interacting with this one. Anything's possible. But I think what they're talking about is, is a split really starting to become more and more evident in this society. Those that want to work more with their own spirituality, more organically in the human experience versus those that are buying into all the programming, all the AI interfacing with technology and and all the drama and everything. And 
you know, the, the, these are things to be aware of because, you know, at some point, you know, maybe in the next several years, even that we may need to think about off grid living, you know, I, whether it comes to that or not, I don't think it's going to come to that. But at the same time, I, I could see a society evolving where a lot of the indigenous, like the Native American values and their um, teachings are, 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 are value, but there's also technology. There's also modern, you know, th these two can blend. They don't have to be opposing forces. Technology is part of the great awakening, but who's going to control it? You know, that's the, the key. So once the evolution takes place and it's not used to, to you know, have power over others uh, for selfish gains and, and, and all that kind of stuff, but rather to be used to help humanity, you know, because again, I say this all the time, we have the resources to feed this entire planet, yet, yet over half of it's hungry. And that's just the way that that the the, the um, world is structured between the politics and the multinational corporations, and they'll select few that run everything, the elite, the cabal, whatever name you want to give them, the ruling families, whatever it is. It's like they, you know, money is power in this world. They they have over ninety percent of the wealth, and so therefore they control things. You know, inflation is no big deal to them, but it's a big deal to us. So a lot of this is orchestrated. A lot of the stresses that bring us into fear, into panic mode, are orchestrated because we're weaker when we're in fear and panic. We're more easily to, easy to control. So therefore, more ups and downs with the economy. So be aware of that. So surgeons, all right, all right. So where are we? Oh, okay. Next page. Worth. Okay, I wrote worth mentioning. It's Easter, right? It's the equinox. It's the resurrection season. It's the rebirth season. So that's worth mentioning that that's part of the energy also. Um, so I see some of you are, are 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 chiming in with that. That's why I'm not playing any favorites here. But you know, th th there's th there's issue. We don't know what the truth is, and I think. We may have ideas and we may get insights. We don't know exactly what it is. So anyway, um, worth mentioning. Okay, the great purge ends, the great shift begins. We've been in, in a purge. A lot of us have been feeling very off. Physical problems, emotional issues, just a, a lot changing in our lives. It's just old energies trying to purge. If we can sit in gratitude in our heart and allow spirit to act on us, and not freak out because we're going to some unknown energy because our subconscious mind wants to make us freak out. It's a survival instinct. That's why meditation, that's why spiritual practice is so important, that we have to be able to withstand these changes and to stay in our center and to stay in our heart and allow spirit to act on our energy fields, act on our bodies, act on our lives in a positive way. They want to help us to purge all, all this negativity so that, that this shift can happen and we can have this awakening. We can enter into that golden age of enlightenment. We have help, extraterrestrials, interdimensional beings, ascended masters, guides, angels, God, spirit. The facades will fall, hidden agenda surface. It's been slowly happening. So this is going to mark a shift in that where it's going to start to happen much quicker. Good. It's People are going to be freaked out. It's not going to be easy, but good. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that a lot of change in this world is going to bring a lot of suffering to people and we don't want that. So lots of prayers to, to that end of things. But that said, in the long term, this is really what we want. You know, if we can reduce the suffering, great. But it's kind of like like if we stay where we are, people are just going to always suffer. So we might as well just get it over with, try to help those that need help, send them a lot of compassion, a lot of love. But that said, this is what we want. You know, I, we don't want a full-on global conflict, basically. But um, but anyway, so the facade will fall. We may learn of groups working with consciousness to overcome oppression. People talk about like groups like the White Hats, for example. You have certain political ideologies. You identify or believe that there's certain armies, if it were. I believe that, that there's been like underground movements. I believe there, 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 there is... There is a force ready to be mobilized and, and to help out if, if the shit really hits the fan. It may not necessarily be what these groups are saying. It may be a little bit different, but I do believe that that's happening. So we may learn about, about some of this also. 
terrorism. Watch D.C., watch London or maybe Paris. A lot of revolutionary activity, basically. A lot of the, the terrorism, hopefully there'll be none, but if it is, uh, much of it may be domestic or, or, or um, orchestrated domestically or through the Western, you know, again, to, you know, manipulate people's thinking and, and, and the movements and everything. But anyway, there could be a major Midwest earthquake. So I should back up, you know, this eclipse is kind of making a buzzsaw through the country. It's that intense gravitational, like, like this magnifying glass of energy, the earth's going to respond. I mean, there's been, I think it was Edgar Casey talked about, um, the the earth the uh north america actually splitting into three continents i, I don't necessarily get it's going to be that extreme but there may be some significant geological changes it may not happen in april but it may be happening in the months to follow but i do think we we will catch something you know behind an earthquake activity they may be right here right right in the uh right in uh Americas and and I believe hydrofracking is going to be a major culprit in this, as is the case with these midwestern and uh, and Great Plains um, earthquakes. Yeah, that that's the, the, it's the it's the wastewater ejection. It's not the fracking itself, but they inject water deep into the earth that lubricates the um the the, the plates and and creates the earthquakes. And they they know about it, but. Are they finding a safer way to extract natural gas? Probably not. So in any way, so we may, may hear about that. Um, more investing in things like gold and foreign currencies. The, the economy gets nervous, basically, and, and people want, want something that's of secure value. So um, so on that note, um, I, I kind of sort of mismatched my, my, my things. So I'll get back to the economy in a second. But uh April 30th, right around April 30th, they show me that date. They show me like UFOs, spaceships or stuff like that. Within days of, of, of April 30th, we may have a major like extraterrestrial event, whether it's a disclosure or just thousand upon thousand people witness this event or something like that. I mean, it could happen any time, but they're, they're showing me that date. So, so what are we, half hour in or it's probably going to be longer than 40 minutes. I kind of knew that. Anyway, we're, you know, we're on page six, so we're getting there. Um, like a crash around April 20th. Take on the Baltimore Bridge. All right. All right. So thank, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. They were kind of alluding to there, there could be, you know, a, a crash, but after a crash comes a recovery. So even if that happened, I would, I wouldn't take that as the end of the world. So back to the economy, more businesses shut down, exposure of corruption, economy, something about insider trading. So there may, there may be um, some exposure to that manipulation of markets, um, there could be a lots of pulling out of stocks, but in general, the energy favors economic growth. It can just be very up and down. So again, there could be a crash. You know, keep an eye on, you know, if, if you're able to keep an eye on what they're doing, I forgot what it was, but there's like one day that about eight or nine pretty high up officials pulled out of a certain stock or a certain company. So, you know, they, they, they know what's going on and a lot of this is orchestrated. So, um, so that's basically all, all that I have in the, the economy. I just feel like like things like Nasara, am I pronouncing that right? Nasara, you know, which is kind of, you know, the, the, it's a whole like process of making, you know, currency more fair for everybody, basically, in, in a nutshell. But, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen in April. It, it, it may not happen exactly what, what, what it, it, it's, um, what it's portrayed to be, but I think, I think it's going to gain a little bit of steam. I'll put it that way. Yeah, you know, because people are, are are looking for stabilization. Things like like you know, should we you know get currency back on on, on a on a gold or or a precious metal standard? Um, you know, things like that. You know, the things with the, you know the battles between the World Economic Forum and then those that are more enlightened that don't want you know one entity to have control of everything. Basically, you know, centralizing money and power. You know. That guy, Klaus Schwab, you will own nothing and be happy. It's like, yeah, we'll own it all. We'll, we'll allot it to the way that we think we should allot it. We'll create social credit scores. So if you're a good boy and girl, you'll have more resource and more money, more good things. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that's going to fly, but 
it, it's 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 in the ethers anyway. So lots of focus on ecology, also like strange things washing on shore, like like die-offs, all that kind of stuff. Significant espionage is, was noted also. Reports of random spying on people may surface, and people may start to get freaked out knowing that they're really watching. You know, Big Brother really is watching. And in short, the web of global corruption takes a major hit. Cabal moves to speed up their agendas to try to keep up with the awakening and stuff like that. So that's a good thing. You know, they, this master teacher, the group that, that I work with through the channeling, you know, often says that the light is one basically already, but that doesn't mean that we're going to, that the dark's giving, I, I don't like light or dark, but you know, the negative and the positive might be better way of putting it. But anyways, um, it's already shifted into that light, higher frequency. So things just have to play out because the, the physical world is extremely dense, right? You know, it's the physical world's the dentist of all. So spiritual people, spiritual businesses, be patient. Lots of pressure from collective against spirituality, but there will be gaps that you can take advantage of. Look for those gaps, especially if you're trying to, like, like me, I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel, stuff like that. And if you're trying to start like, a, you know, like a spiritual coaching business or whatever it is, and you just feel like everything seems like it's working against you. There's always going to be gaps. There's always going to be opportunities where, where the, the collective oppression against spirituality is not messing with you so much. And those are the times to really put it out there, like find those gaps basically. So just to catch people up that, that are new, we often talk about the war on spirituality here that keeps getting ramped up because if people awaken, then they can't have power over everything and can't rule the world. So uh, humanity awakening is their worst nightmare. So they, and this, I didn't write in my notes, but since it's coming to me, I think people are going to start to become more and more aware that those that, that are connected to the deep state, the cabal, whatever word you want to use, they have an understanding of energy and manipulate it. It could even be like things like black magic, satanic rituals, or they're saying it's more like ceremonial magic, not necessarily Satanism, but it's still manipulating these energetic forces. And uh, and ceremonial magic is very powerful. It's been it's been practiced for for um, millennia, basically, and it, it utilizes astrology and energy and numbers and sigils and and and. And you know vibrations and all all that stuff. And you know they know this. They know what's going on with the eclipses and the retrogrades and all that stuff. And a lot of their moves are are are, are around that because then it'll have the most effect. So I think I think people are gonna you know that's part of the waking up. So what else? Um, be patient. All right. Um, so mo medical advances, technology, tighter rules with AI. Yeah, we're definitely gonna need that. Unusual movement of militaries in the east and i wrote down china yeah it could be military simulations happening you know remember most wars on the cyber battlefield it's not even on the physical battlefield um but we want to you know use the word peace right you know you know we'll say no war you know we'll negate that but 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 the peace is what, what we want to focus on, peace in our heart, peace in our mind, peace in the world, basically. But that said, um, you know, they want to control things. So, uh, you know, so, you know, look for that also. However, the energy, the release of tension in the form of violence is, unfor is likely, but the general trend in energy favors diplomacy. So I think there's going to be some diplomatic actions also now of course war is big business um and uh i didn't uh i think somebody uh from um yeah lockheed martin i think resigned or stepped down interesting yeah we're gonna see more of that kind of stuff on uh like that uh all right, you know, I have a you know, I have a kilo of silver for those that are saying to buy silver. Thanks to a very generous um friend who may be on tonight, actually. Um I mean, yeah, I'll probably get more before it goes up. I mean, if you think about it, silver is used in a lot of things also. So if there's a shortage of silver, it, it will go up. So anyway, Boeing. Oh, it's Boeing. I, it, it wasn't Lockheed. All right. Boeing's a little bit different. Yes. Lockheed and, and, and Raytheon are the two big um, 
two big uh, weapons um, manufacturers. Although Boeing, I think, is in there also. Food, music, culture, and love. Thank you for that. Food, music, culture, and love. Yes. So what else? Where are we? Um, however, the energy should be famous behind wars. The agendas behind you know, the global issues, um, the conflicts. Um, you know, no, no number three for the global conflict. I'll, I'm sticking with that prediction, though it may seem like we're moving in that direction. So lines in the sand are drawn, but agenda behind things like that, pathogens, comes under more scrutiny. Good, it needs to, because it's all orchestrated and it's all it's all out there. I'm not even going to say that's a conspiracy theory anymore. It's there, There's so much evidence out there. Mother Earth more honored. Indigenous practices more honored. And again, I have, the, I have this image of penguins on water rather than ice. And I think um, I may have written this in my, oh, I did right under this. But I, I was seeing it. You know, and this could be in April, a major like ice shelf collapse in Antarctica. And that would make sense. It's Antarctic autumn right now. So it's, it's you know, it's right after their warmer season. And um, Antarctic fall. Yeah, it's autumn. You have the spring here. Uh, and uh, and that, that can cause a very sizable tidal wave that could affect the whole planet. Now, as I'm saying, I feel like Spirit's saying, we're not going to have that, not to worry. But... That's happening. Just the alarming rate of global warming, how rapid it is. It's re it really, you know, that that's going to be, you know, on the forefront also. So also, I was seeing a lot of Egyptian deities, which is also Atlantean, which is also connected to star beings like, um, like Sekhmet, the Lion Goddess, and Bastet from the uh, Lyran system, where the, where the Lion people are from, basically. Um, so I think I think there's more of an on oh, my ears are buzzing. I think that's an important point. More of an honoring. Maybe they're saying as a group, you know, work with the Egyptian deities also, because a lot of them were, were extraterrestrial time and space travelers that are probably back or they're probably working with us right now also. So if you hold an intention, like like visualize like say ISIS or 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 um or or Hathor or whatever, whatever, whichever one of the deities you're really drawn to or a group of them. And really hold that. You'll tap into that energy. You'll tap into that frequency. And you'll get messages, right? Right, Mr. Floyd? You'll get messages just by tapping into that uh, into that frequency. So, uh, so I feel like they're saying it's part of our exercise to do more of that. Presence of angelic and extraterrestrial gods and master teachers, master um, uh, ascended masters, more available, more on the right, more people awakening, more people hearing them. And that's a, a big theme also. A lot of people... Not everybody that has a spiritual practice is going to go undergo major spiritual awakening. It's just a matter of frequency. If the frequency is on the threshold, whether, whether you've been practicing spirituality in this lifetime or not, um, and, and you reach the, 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 the threshold for the codes to flip on, for the DNA codes to flip on, you'll have an awakening. And, and for those that are unprepared, it can be very terrifying. And I, and I have clients that, that's happened to already that I've been helping them through. So, um, so I think we're seeing more of that. You know, the symptoms can be debilitating, but it's only for a while. They will pass. So if, that, if that's you and you have difficult symptoms, stay in the heart. Stay grounded. Stay, uh, keep praying, keep connecting to source. That's going to help your body and, and your energetic fields to adjust to these new frequencies and these new awarenesses of awakening. And those symptoms will start to allay over time. Basically, they will pass. Um, the more prepared you are, the less likely you are to suffer serious symptoms. And changes in land configuration follow, not just here in the United States and in the world. There's a lot more because there's a lot going to go on with the weather. You know, I keep seeing a peninsula being becoming an island, whether that's Baja or Florida or where that is, I'm not sure. I don't think that's in April, but there, there's going to be more. But you, you get the energy, you get the flavor of it, right? So um, moving right along... Um, work with oh these these are some exercises and they were saying work with the feet you know i was asking very i say tell them to work with their feet v you know meditate on the feet i mean you know i mean in my in my in astrology the sign pisces rules the feet so that's part of it but you know our, our feet connect us to mother earth also our feet move us around terrestrially um so for whatever reason they're saying to meditate on our feet 
I don't know why, but, but that, that came up. Well, then they followed. Well, do grounding also. The more grounded we are, the better. This is a full-on energetic storm. I live in the Catskills. We have a lot of white pine. White pines have very shallow roots. So when the thunderstorm comes, if the winds are all over 50, 55, the white pines fall. But the deeply rooted birch trees and the maples, they don't fall. They, they stay standing. So we want to be grounded. When this energetic storm hits, we don't want to fall over. It's great to be empathic, but it needs to be balanced by being very grounded and having a very strong frame also. That way we can still feel, but we're not overwhelmed by what we feel with the world and with other people. And because people are freaking out. I'm highly empathic. And they wrote the book on empath. They were talking about me. You know, I was the person that that would start crying and 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 not realizing that I'm feeling somebody else's sadness. It's not my own. You know, I I have stories and I want to bore you with that. Um, but the point being is that empath being empathic is a great gift, but it can be debilitating too, and, and, and to make it undebilitating so you can be out in the world and function at ground. You know, the more ground, the more solid you are on the earth, the less this energy is going to bowl you over. And it, it's worth, you know, feeling your heart. So keep doing your heart brain coherence. We have videos to teach you how to do that. I still feel like that's going to be one of the most important practices moving forward in the 2020s because the heart is everything. When we get our hearts into coherence, which is love, basically in a nutshell, our brains become coherent, our energetic fields become coherent, and then we blend with source or spirit, which is everything. Of course, we still want, want to build the other chakras. We don't want to just focus on the heart, but do your heart-brain coherence and, and really work with that. So grounding, heart-brain coherence, and long, deep breathing daily, inhaling love of the universe. Feel the light around you. Inhale that into your heart. Feel your heart open and expanding, blending with source, exhaling, releasing colics and blockages from the system. Do that every day. It only takes three minutes, three times a day. This is showtime. Double down on those spiritual practices. The more you're able to do that, the more you'll be able to withstand the challenging parts and benefit from the beneficial part. And uh, and I wrote a note to myself, don't forget the divination cards. So let's see where you're going. All right. Thank you, unspoken heart stillness. Yeah, and, and all, all you guys that are adding, I, I'm often when I do these, I keep up with that and I even flash people's comments. I do that more on tarot time. That's more the community thing where we really have a conversation as I'm doing the tarot. That's Sundays at 11 a.m. that I do that. But but thank you for adding and and, and everything and sharing and, and make, making this an even better experience because you know what? We all have a piece of the puzzle. No one person has all the answers around here. We're all equal in this community. Um, so the way it is. So this is called the, the, the divine abundance oracle. And I like this because it gives us like like either a prayer or a message. So this will be something that spirit is adding that maybe I, I didn't talk about or or that I need to put a stamp on. Um put the stamp on. <laughs> uh and I just have to. Make sure my mind is clear, which it is. I went right to the card, very, very clear. Companionship, giving someone your complete presence is an astonishing gift. So companionship's important. I didn't talk about that, right? So you know who your friends are and stay aligned with your friends, you know, your companions, those that are of like mind. We are at the end of the day, a community species. Our survival depends on each other. And yeah, we can live by ourselves, um, but sharing a community. And we, of course, we have the, the medium channel is, is my community that, that we're all invited to. It's our community, not my community. I just facilitate it. So that's a slip of the tongue there, but it's our community. And uh, um and you know, acknowledge our companions and our friends and align to those of like mind. You know, the more we can align with, with like-minded people, other communities, and 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 connect with communities and become a world community of conscious light workers, the more supportive we are, the more we're able to support others. That's very important when there's so much change. Know your community. Yeah, you know, and and the what ifs, like if we had to like live off-grid for a while and grow our own food. 
you know, it's good to know the farms in the area. If, you know, like I'm in the Hudson Valley. I'm very fortunate. Of course, Spirit told me this would be one of the safest places on the earth when the earth changes happen, which is right now, basically. Um, so know that. Yeah, yeah. All right. So that's a great message. And, and, and again, something that, that, that I totally missed. Um, all right. Um, I also like, like to work with a frequency of the month. So I have my uh, sacred geometry deck for that. So it's all about cyber attack. Yeah, you know, you can expect a, a lot of those too. Yeah. Uh, with the cyber attack, you know, again, most of it's on the cyber battlefield. You know, most of the, most of the wars in this world. But of course that didn't stop physical people from, from dying, suffering, getting displaced and all. So the more we can open our hearts and raise the vibration, the sooner this madness ends. And uh, somebody sent me a quote by one of my favorite philosophers, uh, Jay Krishnamurti. Um, and when that quote was, I'd rather be, be weird in, in, in a society that's inherently sick than normal, basically. And that that's what kind of been my motto all along. It's like, I'm strange and we are good because <laughs> this is a sick society that we live in. I don't want to be normal in, 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 in this. Uh, anyways, that said, uh, and thanks to my, Michael for assisting our, our community here with their investments. So, um, He's very good with stuff like that. Yeah, you definitely have your finger on the pulse, even if you don't consider yourself an expert. Compared to me, you are. <laughs> All right, let me clear my mind a sec. So they've shown me an infinity sign, which is the strength card in the tarot, which used to be key 11, and it got switched to key 8 in the tarot, which is the lion's muzzle and clenched fist in Chaldean numerology, the number 11. So it's overcoming the lower forces. We can only do that for ourselves. We can't do that for anybody else. We overcome them by integrating it. We don't see our lower nature, something negative, evil, nasty, or something that has to be suppressed, stamped to the ground, buried, or whatever. We need to integrate it because it, within that, it, it's part of our power. But if we integrate it, then it becomes the wolf you feed, you know, like, like you feed the, the, the light or the dark, yeah, and, and so forth. So anyway, so they pop that in my mind. I figured I'd share that also. And I went right to the card. Well, my hand seems to move on its own. I know spirits directing. Ooh, we got 33 before 33. Speaking of 33, it's Easter, right? Uh, Good Friday is tomorrow. Um, Jesus was said to be 33 when, when he um, resurrected. Um, whether that's literal or symbolic is uh, a subject to debate, but, but he did resurrect and did ascend at that time from what I understand. Um, and the message here is the frequency of miracles supports our belief in ourselves as a part of source mind. Therefore, our belief that anything is possible. Know the miracles happen every day. Expect a miracle. You know, that's the law of assumption. I expect miracles every day. I, I expect things that I'm working on so that I can be financially free and I'm more free than I ever was in my life. So the stuff, this work that I do is working, but I'm not at my goals yet you know it's sort of like um like massive um you know negative programming around money so it's taking me a while but but that's just an example but but i assume i i, I believe the miracles are already happening and that, that's the idea and you can get the energy just by gazing in the center of this card in the sacred geometry but that's the idea miracles are real and and i, I my life's a miracle because um there's virtually a 100 percent chance that i died for, from a cardiac event about eight years ago i mean doctors will say literally other than the fact that i'm still alive um and to make a long story short i had an aneurysm basically burst in my heart in the ascending aorta but the outer wall of the aorta held and it was a long tear you know from the heart all the way to the millimeter in the main artery and the outer wall held and i got my surgery seven months later to fix the aneurysm they didn't even know until they went in that's just not medically possible but it happened that's a miracle we hear about miracles every day so that's what we have to remember if things get really rough and tough remember we're aligned with god's source we're aligned with the most 
abundant power of the universe. No one's stronger than you, by the way. No one's more powerful, whether they're spirits or humans, because we all draw from the same source. And that source is the creator of all miracles. So own that. <laughs> Last but not least, uh, uh, yeah, you know, Mr. Floyd, I just wasn't, it wasn't my time, simply. And I, you know, in a way, it's, it, it's partly my fault that it got to that level because I had an intuition something was wrong that, that I didn't follow. But they remind, well, if you had followed it, you would not have had this miracle story to share that's very inspiring for others. So they'll, they'll, they'll probably, you know, they won't read me the, the riot act when I cross over about that anyway. All right. Um, yes, Don, indeed, God was with me. And that's what my surgeon said, who happened to be an Indian Sikh. What are the, I'm a Kundalini yogi. What are the odds? <laughs> I mean, there are Indian surgeons, but he was warm. He was personal. I met him and the first thing out of his mouth was, well, I'm not going to heal you. God's going to heal you. I'm just his instrument. And I liked him right there. <laughs> uh, oh, anyhow, it was all the whole thing was miraculous. All right, so this is the um, angel therapy cards of Doreen Virtue's former incarnation when, when she was a channel and, and and work with angels, power animals. So let's work with our power animals also. Do meditation to find your power animals. And you'll notice the numbers have been going up on the chat. So you know, as soon as we're done, catch the beginning, <laughs> please. Anyway, your animal spirit guide is a guardian to you and is helping you with the situation. So call, draw on your animal totems. Um, I'm seeing like a lot of birds, birds like crows and eagles. They, they're messengers from spirit. But whatever you feel an affinity for, if you know one or more of your, your guardian or totem animals, invite them in in your meditations also. So anyway, we're almost an hour. Um I'm going to end now. Um, hopefully that, that that's helpful for you. And yeah, people saying yeah, that, that you need a doctor like that. And, you know, my, my, I, I like my cardiologist too. You know, you know the, the surgeon retired. His name is Dr. Shahani from Vassar Brothers in Kingston that has one of the top um, cardi thoracic cardiac surgical teams in the whole country. So I, you know, and, my, and my cardiologist hooked me up with him. He didn't know that I was a yogi, but he's like, I know the right surgeon for you. He hooked me up with him, and oh my God, I, I owe them both. I mean, I owe them both my life, basically. That everything that I do in this life, that, you know, that help other people in society, I owe it to to them, you know, because they they kept me alive in this body for, for, for to be able to do this now. All right, y'all. Um, thank you. So yeah, please like, comment, share. You know, liking really helps. You know, if anybody could benefit from this, please share. I mean. It helps them, but it also helps get this video out there. That's how the YouTube algorithm works. It's like a popularity contest, but that, that's just the way it is. So anyway, I'm going to end now. I think my, I believe my next live stream, unless I'm missing something, will be Sunday at 11 for tarot time. So I'll see some of you guys there. Love you. Thank you.